This is lesson 28, BHDL example 15. And in this example, our goal is to write a single BHDL program called X7SEG, which will be a component that we can use to display a four digit hex number stored in X15 down to zero on the seven segment displays. We'll also make another version called X7SEGB, which will display the hex four digit hex number with leading blanks. Okay, well, here's how we do it. We have a X7 seg is going to look like this, which has a, which is very similar to what we had in the last example. The only difference is we've replaced the buttons we had here with a 2-bit counter. And this 2-bit counter is going to count S here, 00011011 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, to multiplex the four hex digits in X. We'll also have to modify our AN code so that when this is 0, 0, then we select only digit 0 by bringing AN0 low, and so forth. We're also going to add a new input to this AN code called AEnable so that we can control if we display anything on a particular digit. That is, if a enable 3 down to 0 is 1111, then all digits will be enabled. That is, when we display hex 1, 2, 3, 4, they'll all be on. If we want to turn one of the digits off, we will just put a 0 in the corresponding digit position here. So we can make any of the digits that we want to be disabled. So the question is, how do we do this 2-bit counter? Well, we'll see in a minute how to do that. We're going to need an external clock. And um, your FPGA board has a 15, it has a 50 megahertz clock, uh, but that's way too fast to, um, to control our, uh, our counter here because we want to count relatively slowly, maybe, say, 190 hertz, because each digit's on a uh, fourth of the time, and so 190 divided by 4 would be about 48 hertz. And if you refresh each digit at a 48 hertz a rate, then your eye will integrate it and it'll look like they're all on at the same time. So we'll need to have a big clock divider, really, to, um, to cut the uh, clock frequency down to something manageable. We'll see how to do that in a minute. All right, let's write the uh, BHDL program then. Our X7 seg is going to have a 16-bit input X for the four hex digits. It's going to have a clock and a clear. That's going to be for our little counter, we'll see. Then our usual A to G out, our enable out four bits, and our decimal point out. Okay, here's the architecture. We need a signal S that's going to go into the multiplexer one down to zero. Our signal digit, that's the output of the multiplexer input to hex 7 seg. Our A enable, that's new, that's three down to zero, that's going to be used to enable each of the four digits. And now we have this clock div, which is 20 down to zero. This is a tw going to be a 21-bit counter, and we're going to peel off, as we'll see, the top two bits. So our S signal here that is going to go into our multiplexer, that is the two control bits for the multiplexer, are just going to be clock div 20 down to 19. Now we're not going to talk about counters in much detail because we cover those in detail in later uh, lessons after we've learned some sequential logic and how flip-flops work. But for now, you just need to know that we're going to have a 21-bit counter, and the top two bits, if this clock, this 21-bit clock, counts at a 50 megahertz rate, then the top two bits will count at about a 190 hertz rate, which is what we want. So that's where S is going to come from. We'll set A enable to 1111, doesn't point to 1. This is our quad 4 to 1 mux that we had in the last lesson. We're going to do it exactly the same way, just make these processes. Here's the 7-segment decoder, 
we still have to put the a n code module in okay so now we have to write a process for this a n code module now remember what this does a n enable if they're all ones we'll set them all to ones here that'll enable all of the digits so if if it's enabled then if s is zero zero we want to bring a n to zero to zero if s one zero is say one one we want to bring a n three to zero so look how we do it. There's a little bit of a trick here. We'll set the output a ends to 1 to begin with, all 1, 1, 1, 1. And then if the corresponding bit, a enable, is set to 1, then we'll make the corresponding a n to 0. Now there are two things to look at here. First of all, s, you remember, is of type standard logic and I'm writing a n sub some subscript which I need to be an integer so for example if s is a 1 0 I need to convert it to 2 and you do that with this function convert integer so convert integer s converts say 1 0 to 2 so if a enable sub 2 is equal to 1 then a n 2 gets set to 0 the other thing to remember is that these assignment statements don't get executed, you remember, until the end of the process. That's why we can set a n to 1, 1, 1, 1 to begin with, and then if one of the corresponding a enable inputs is 1, we set that corresponding a enable bit to 0. That will override this first one because it hasn't been actually executed yet because we're not at the end of the process. So when you get to the end of the process, you'll have all of the ANs ones except one in which the AN enable in any of them in which AN enable is equal to one. The only one left then is our counter. Here's how the clock divider works. Remember we had the signal clock div, and we set S to clock div 20 down to 19. That gave us our our low frequency count, but how did it count to begin with? Well, that's this clock div signal. And the way it works is we say if clear equals one, we set them all to zero. This others go to zero is a way to set all 21 bits of these to zero if the clear signal input is one. Else, now this funny clock tick event and clock equals one means that if on the rising edge of the clock we increment the clock div by one, that is we make it a counter. So this is how we make a counter. Don't worry about these details for now. We're going to come back and talk about these in later lessons in more detail. But this is how we get the counter to work. And we set S to the upper two bits to get the low frequency counter to work. So that's X7 seg. To test it, we'll make a top-level design. M clock is the name of the 50 megahertz clock that's going to be coming in here. Uh, that's in the UCF file. Then we have the usual button, A to G, A in, and decimal point. And here's the component X7 seg. We'll display A, B, C, D uh, all at one time on the seven segment display. And we do it just by port mapping X7 seg. So X goes to X, clock goes to M clock. Clear we'll put to button three. A to G goes to A to G, A N to A N, decimal point to decimal point, and that's it. You can download this and check it out. We'll make another version called X7 seg B, which will display leading blanks for leading zeros as blanks. And the way to do that is easy. We just set a n a r a enable 3 down to 0 for leading blanks. For example, a n 3 is just going to be set to x 15 or 14 or 13 or 10. In other words, if any of the top four bits in x is set to 1, then an enable is 1 and 
otherwise it's zero and if it's zero it will be displayed as a blank. Uh, similarly if the first two digits are zero, leading zeros, that is if x15 or 14 or 13 or 12 or 11 or 10 or 9 or 8, if any of these are 1 then we display it, if they're all 0 then we display a leading blank. And similarly a and a enable 1 we have to check all the first uh, you know, 12 bits and if any of those are 1 we display it otherwise we display 0. A and enable 0 will set to 1 so digit 0 always gets displayed. There's the quad 4 to 1 mux same as before this is the same as before, our hex 7 seg, our A encode, and our clock divider. So we'll make a new top level design here. We'll have a clock coming in. Uh, this should really be our M clock, M clock coming in. And then this component X7 seg B. So what we're going to do is we're going to set X to the switches concatenated with the lower three buttons concatenated with 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So digit zero, 0 will always display A and the upper digits you can control by the switches and the buttons so you can make them leading zeros or not to test it out. So then to port map it will just set X to X clock to, this should really be M clock uh, clear to button 3 and the rest is all the same. So you can test that out to see if the uh, leading zeros get displayed as blanks.